That's it right there. My one and only love. For all love is God. That's our one and only love. The one and only. God only, love only, only God, only love. That's Ray Davis accompanying himself on the keyboards and allowing his voice to be used for the melody of the spirit, bringing us into a soulful devotion with the great presence, the great power, the great love, so that we walk the path of ecstasy and bliss and celebration. We walk the path of whole soul devotion where we are surrendering to the next level of our own unfolding, which is more of God's love in and as us. And so we've been ushered into this frequency and into this vibration that we may become steadfast, that we may become one-pointed, eye single, body full of light, that we may live according to this spiritual practice so that our light and our body lights up like a Christmas tree, bringing forth all the light and the luminosity that's everywhere, but only not where it's being suppressed by lies, limited perceptions, faulty beliefs, superstitions. So we can begin to see that the clouds may be hiding the sun, the sunlight of our own being, but the sun is always shining, and never is it not shining. So when we pop up through the clouds of doubt and that sense of separation, we see that we never, ever had to pray for the sun to shine. We were praying that the elimination of the clouds would be quickened, that we can see the sun is shining. Therefore, we never pray for God to be God. God is always God. God is always love. God is always peace. God is always joy. God is always life itself. We're praying to remove the obscurations from our mind and heart that we may begin to see and participate in the God flow. So that the God flow is where we are living. And then the eternal verities, the sacred, uh, the sacred, sacred expressions, sacred expressions of the presence of God begin to, our life begins to bear witness to them in ways that we can ever even take credit for, but which we can participate in. I welcome you to Agape on this first Sunday of 2021, which means we may have turned the page in the calendar, but because you're here and because we're celebrating, you know that turning the page of the calendar is not as significant as turning our attention away from lack and limitation, self-loathing, lack of self-love and appreciation, turning our attention away from scarcity, not enough, just turning our attention away from fear, doubt, and worry, and turning our attention to the living one, the divine presence that's closer to us than our breathing, nearer than our hands and feet, that we're able to proclaim with an ease, a grace, a dignity, and a power, I am what thou art. Thou art what I am, and live in that fully and completely, moment by moment, by moment, by moment, by moment. So today, or this month, as we're working with this uh, theme of soulful success, robbery, limitation, hindrance, not included, we're coming to a greater awareness this month that when we speak of soulful success, we're speaking about manifestate, true manifestation which has something to do with, as we are manifesting, our soul is unfolding. We're activating the deep spiritual character of our nature and becoming more, never less, than our true self. We're not really, not merely using the law uh, to bring things into visibility without a transformation of our own soul. That would lead to addiction, and that would lead to what is called pseudo-success, becoming addicted to the law of manifestation and gaining the world and losing our soul, gaining stuff, materialism, gaining stuff, you know, the, the things of the world that temporarily brings a little joy into people's life, we would lose or atrophy our soul faculty by just staying, as Ray and I were talking earlier, just staying on the side of using the law, but never embracing our connection with the presence of God that is within us. So that soulful success has something to do with the manifestation and the unfoldment of our being and being more and never less than our true self. I used to shock people from time to time when they would ask for a healing of the body temple, and I would say, why? 
and it would take them back a moment because what I was driving them to was, you know, what are you going to do when your body is healthy? Are you going to sit around and, and, and sit on the couch and eat potato chips? Are you going to like, do nothing with the body? Or does the healthy body give you a greater capacity to serve, a greater capacity to be creative, a greater capacity to release your talents, your gifts, and, and, and the, the unbridled, unlimited capacity for more of the presence of God to shine through you, greater capacity to love, the greater capacity uh, to bring about your gifted nature so that it's not just about manifesting a perfect body. It is about having a body that's healthy enough and having the, the capacity to hold more of the cosmic energy so that you can bring heaven to earth and be a part of the building of the beloved community. Same thing with anything. Same thing with money. Uh, do you want more money just to stack it up and count it? Or is the money to be used as a purpose to take care of your family, to take care of yourself, uh, to take care of things that you, you love on the planet, rainforests, oceans, uh, your spiritual community, uh, scholarships for people, whatever the case may be, you know, is it, does it have a purpose that has something to do with the character of your being, that's your real nature and soul, or are you just using the law uh, to appease your acquisitive appetite, of which can never be filled if there's an imaginary hole within you that you think is going to be filled with the baubles of the world, you'll only become addicted to having more baubles, thinking that the, this next one is going to make me happy. This next thing is going to bring me joy, only to discover uh, that your soul is atrophied and you've become addicted to your acquisitive nature, rather that's, the, that's on the human personality side, rather than the impulse, the evolutionary impulse that's within you that wants to express itself more completely more profoundly, more beautifully, more wonderfully as you. And so when we speak of soulful success, we're talking about not being the same individual after manifestation, not being the same individual month to month to month to month and year to year to year in our life, but constantly evolving, constantly unfolding, so that more and more of the presence, which is infinite, by the way, gets to reveal itself through our life. Remember what I was saying when Jackie Simone was saying, use me, that ultimately we're used by this presence so that we reflect and reveal the living cosmos in a way that has never, ever happened before because we have never happened to before. And the iteration of what we're becoming has never happened before. Each of us as distinct, unified, individual, unique expressions of infinite potential. So there is soulful success, and this is why it is stated there in Scripture. Now, what would an individual gain if they gained the whole world but lost their soul, lost their conscious connection? I heard one of these billionaires say one time, they were asking him about the divinity of humanity. He said, I've, I've never seen any evidence of it, <laughs> you know. And you can see in his outworking and the way he walks through life that he doesn't see human beings as divine at, at all. He's lost his soul along the way. You know, he'll gain it probably with a lot of pain, but hopefully with some insight. Now, where are you in this? Soulful, soulful manifestation. And then there's the second part of that particular theme that says robbery and limitation and hindrance not included. What does that mean? That means as you rise into a higher frequency of your soulful success, as you begin to accomplish from that particular domain under the aegis of embracing the evolutionary impulse that governs all creation, you do not hinder anyone else's good. You don't steal anyone else's good. You don't block anyone else's good because you are drawing from the infinite cosmic quantum field of limitless good. So whenever you rise and express a deeper sense of success in every, any area of your life, you're not taking anything from anyone. There's no hindrance there. There's no blockage. There, there's no limitation at all because you're not under the aegis or the superstitious lie that if, in fact, you arrive at some good or receive some good or become available to some good, that it is limited and that because good is happening for you, it means that 
that no good, that some good is being left somewhere else or that someone else doesn't have enough. That is not a truth. We live in a quantum field. Remember one of my favorite statements of the Bhagavad Gita, and that is when you take abundance from abundance, abundance still remains. That you cannot exhaust the inexhaustible. So your particular movement towards success does not hinder, does not limit, does not rob anyone of their good. As a matter of fact and as a matter of truth, you create waves of contagion that just as the ocean, just as a wave emerges from the ocean, and contains the constituents of uh, the ocean, there's an emergence from the ocean. You have emerged from the quantum field of infinite possibility. And as you ascend in your vibration and frequency of success, you, you, what emerges from you is a wave of energy, a wave of frequency that not only paves the way uh, for you in your ongoingness, but it creates a field of contagion. Now, so much talk about contagion is going on right now, and people have become uh, disinterested in the real contagion, and have become falsely interested or overly interested in the contagion of disease and viruses and things of this particular nature, and your interest does determine your experience. So if you become too interested in that, you'll have an experience of that whether you catch it or not. And so we want you to understand that you are here when you're rising in success, you are producing waves of contagion and a field of possibility everywhere you go. That because we're vibrational beings, that wave of success that emerges through you absolutely up, not hinders, doesn't obstruct, doesn't take away, doesn't rob. It am amplifies the possibility for other people to live in the domain of success according to their particular pattern. So you don't want to unconsciously think that you're taking away from something or somebody when you rise in success. You're actually giving to the newosphere, the mental atmosphere of the planet. You're planting seeds of possibility based on you going for it, based on you rising. You're planting the seed that goes into the soil of collective consciousness of what can be done. So when one person gets healed, one person has a remission, one person uh, uh, rises from abject poverty and emerges as success in some area of their life. If anyone can do it, everyone can do it. So you become a part of a new story invading a humanity's mindset, and that story is success is everywhere. Soulful success is for everybody, not just for a limited few. You also create wake, wakes of their past. It's like when you see a boat, there's a wave, and then there's a wake that follows behind the particular boat or the particular surfer, whatever the case may be. You create wakes of inspiration, wakes of encouragement as a vibrational being. So your good does not hinder. Your good does not block. Your good does not limit. Your good does not steal. Your good, which is your good, which is the expression of your uniqueness, uh, creates wakes and waves of possibility and creates a field that creates a kind of an armor and a shield from the superstitious lies of lack and limitation and scarcity, which does not exist in the quantum field, does not exist in the realm of heaven, does not exist in the realm of ever-expanding good, does not exist where there's a center everywhere and a circumference is nowhere, does not exist in divine mind, does not exist in limitless love intelligence. And what are you here to do? To manifest that, uh, to demonstrate that to reveal that through soulful realization and then wakes and waves of your life, of your life living, creates a current of possibility for humanity. Now, oftentimes people are nervous about the fact that they have become addicted to their habitual frequency. They become in a comfort zone of the frequency of which they, which they were living and the particular things and people that are in that particular frequency. It becomes kind of a, a dead zone, a kind of a, a comfort zone in which people go to die in it. 
And unconsciously, they get a little nervous that if they start to rise, if they start to have vision, they start to think possibility, they start to, start to think that their life can change, their life can be better. They start to think, uh, I can live an intentional life, and throw myself open to it and watch what happens. I can begin to articulate a vision and slowly, incrementally, step by step by step, walk in that direction that I'm going to hurt the individuals who have walked the path with me in this habit of the frequency that we've been carrying, the habit of woe is me, the habit of blaming, the habit of gossiping, the habit of, of, of finding a fault in other people as a scapegoat against your own unfolding success. And I want you to know that, can, that there's nothing further from the truth than that. That when you break free from your own constriction, your own self-made prisons of habitual frequency, you do not hurt the people that you're walking with at that level. You help everyone when you rise. You break the condition of stagnation. You no longer live in the nation of stag. You're not, you're not in stagnation anymore. You're in the nation of agape, in the nation of, of the flow of good beyond your wildest imagining, and individuals get shook up and because of your wave. And because of your wake, you wake people up to the possibility of, of what can happen in their life based on what's happening in your life. It's an unconscious thing to hang out in a comfort zone. It's not conscious. It's not, it's not you consciously saying, I want to I wanna live in the status quo of my life for the rest of my life. I wanna. No, no. It's an unconscious comfort zone of belonging. But you are now to make some people that you can't even see where you belong to. You can't see Jesus. You can't see Gautama the Buddha. You can't see Walter Russell, perhaps. You can't see Howard Thurman. But you can make them some of your best friends. You can make individuals who have been powerful agents in industry, creativity, art, beauty, prosperity, you can begin to run with these individuals and, and hang out with them on a frequency level until they become your best friends, so to speak. And then the presence of God becomes, is already closer to you than your breathing and hands and feet becomes more real to you and you will not feel bereft when you have to leave a certain frequency because hands of love ushering in you into a, you being born again into a higher frequency are right there there, you see? And then you want to understand just a couple of more things along these lines. You want to begin to, un to understand that, that one, it is a part of your spiritual practice that when good happens anywhere on the planet, to or through anyone, you are to inwardly celebrate the good that is taking place. You are to take a, put a smile on your face and be so grateful that some good fortune happened to someone. If not, if you allow the egoic perception of jealousy and envy to come into your particular frequency, you're not going to hinder the person that's successful, but you're going to hinder yourself from participating in that frequency because you're putting it down. You say, oh my God, they're lucky. Oh my God, they were they're in the right place at the right time. I don't know why the good fortune is happening for them. They ain't nothing. I knew them in high school. They were nothing. Da, da, da. They were always doing A, B, C, and D. I know who they really are. No, you don't. <laughs> Only God knows who they really are. Their soul knows who they really are. But if you're putting them down, then you don't know. And so, in fact, when good happens everywhere, make it a part of your spiritual practice. Say, yes, go for it. Yes, I applaud you. Yes, way to go, way to go. And then you'll be opening yourself up to that frequency in your own life. You won't be putting it down. You know, people will say, oh, all rich people are bad. Would you shut up? You want to be rich. Are you going to be bad? <laughs> Listen. Oh, they're so, they look, they must, they look so good. Oh, my God, what are they doing? Listen, calm down. When you see good anywhere, you see beauty anywhere, you see love anywhere, you see joy anywhere, you see peace anywhere, you see prosperity anywhere, you celebrate it as if it's your own because it is your own. We're all one in the spirit, you see. And as Jesus the Christ said in that powerful quantum statement, if I am lifted up, I am. As I am lifted up, I draw all unto me. 
as that individual is being lifted up, they're drawing you to a higher frequency. As you're being lifted up, you draw others to a higher frequency. And then that wake and that wave puts you in a fortress of solitude and safety and wellness and well-being. And nothing can touch you unless they're in that frequency. You're not in it, you see. And then you want to understand this aspect of it. When you feel you're being put down because you're rising, you feel that you're being talked about because you escaped the limited point of views that so many people live in. Then you pull upon those teachings of Yeshua ben Joseph, Jesus the Christ, and you hear him say, bless them that curse you. Pray for them that despitefully use you. He wasn't teaching you how to be a good person. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to bless them. His whole teaching was about consciousness, right, Reverend Joanne? Consciousness. He was saying in substance, when you bless the individuals that are cursing you and you pray for the individuals that are despitefully using you, you're expanding your awareness. You're coming to a higher frequency and you can't be touched by the arrows of hate that are being shot in your direction. You're not there. And then down the line, as you spiritually mature, you're going to discover something. You're going to absolutely praise the people that talked about you because they made you pray fervently. They made you get down like James Brown, Brother Wayne. They, they, they made you burn the midnight oil. You're going to say, oh, my God, you, you have no idea. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good that when you shot that hate in my direction, you made me get closer to the presence of God. You made me go down into the well of my own soul and have spiritual realization that I'm one with the power and the presence and the love of God and no hurt, harm, no danger can come nigh my dwelling place because the Most High is my habitation. You will thank the individuals that put you down when you rose, you see. And so when we're speaking of soulful success, we're speaking about the unfoldment of our soul along with the manifestation of the good in our life. And we don't call it a true manifestation unless we have grown in that particular demonstration of life. We have discovered uh, this, this morning uh, that we, we, we do not hinder or obstruct or limit anyone by a shining. We break un all unconscious hand-holding with mediocrity. And believe you me, there is a conspiracy for mediocrity. There's a conspiracy for mediocrity. It's called the very society in which you are living. It's a conspiracy for mediocrity. It's not a conspiracy for creativity. It's a conspiracy for mediocrity, not innovativeness, not playing out, not drawing outside the lines, not having insight and breaking free from the, 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 the society in which you're living. Do you realize that society gives you minimal standards for living? You don't want to live by the minimum. No! You want to be so alive with the Spirit that your existence shines and glows with the presence of God. Now you want to love so deeply. You want to share so profoundly. You want to be so creative that you're way outside of the bounds of the minimal standards of society. You see, you, there's a conspiracy for you to stay small. There's a conspiracy for you to be afraid. There's a conspiracy for you to go nervous every time something goes bump in the night. There's a conspiracy about that. But you're not going to hold hands with, with, this, with this conspiracy of mediocrity. You're going to hold hands with excellence. That becomes your vibration. And that's with any, that's from washing dishes. That's from folding your clothes. That's everything you do. You do your best in a level of excellence. And then you'll, you'll rise up in frequency. And sometimes your best is not as good as it is every single day. That's not the point I'm making. The point I'm making is you go for your best all the time until that becomes your pattern. That becomes your habit. That becomes where you live, you see. And then you're not in the conspiracy of mediocrity. You're holding hands with excellence. You, know, you understand? It doesn't take any courage to resign yourself to the way things are. There's no courage to do that. 
Courage comes when you're not living in resignation, but you're living in what I call a conscious naivete, that you're so naive that you actually think you can make a difference. You actually think that you can live an excellent life. You actually think that you can lift the vibration of the environment which you're living in. It's a conscious naivete. It takes courage to live there. It doesn't take courage to resign yourself to the way things are, you see. And so you enter into a soulful, a soulful, successful manifestation of good, and then you're able to carry the frequency of, ooh, I just heard, ooh, some good stuff happened to him. Oh, I'm so happy about it. Ooh, did you hear what happened to so so? Oh, my God, man, they got this job. They're making so much money. And your ego's not going to go, well, they don't deserve it. How'd they get it? And how come I didn't get it? No, 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 no. You're not even going to ride on jealousy. You're not going to ride on envy. You're going to ride on celebration so you don't block your own good. And when that's coming at you, it's going to be, how bless them. Thank you for making me pray today. I almost forgot to pray, but you came at me with some stuff I had to pray. Thank you for doing it. And you bless those that despitefully use you, you see. This becomes a pattern. And then, where are you? You're at new beginnings again. Every day, new beginnings. Now, everybody's into the new beginnings right now because it's the beginning of the year. So everybody, you know, is getting their vision boards together and they're, 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 they're beginning to articulate vision and establishing intention for their life. All good stuff, you see. But sometimes that stuff fades. Gets to be around, you know, April. And people are back in the, in the weeds again with circumstances and situations. They forgot their vision. They forgot their intentionality. They forgot their spiritual practice. You know, I, you know they say, I was going to walk around the block every single day and hydrate. And, you know, three months later, they're thirsty again, sitting on the couch. <laughs> you know, so there has to be a practice where you begin again every single day. You wake up. Listen, we're living in a non-linear timeless field of infinite potential. It's not linear. There is no yesterday, today, and forever like that. I mean, and, and tomorrow like that. You see, there is a forever, yes. Uh, uh, you live in a, in a, in a non-dimensional, timeless, infinite field whose center is everywhere. And we live in a state of emergence, you see. So you have to stop every single day and begin again, again. This is, I am a fresh starting point for reality to express through. This is my new beginning today. I'm not carrying the mood from yesterday. Some people put a placeholder in the mood that they had yesterday. I've seen people do this, you know what I mean? Uh, they'll, 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 something happened. And authentically, something did happen. There was some negative experience, so-called negative experience that took place. And, and they're in that. And then they, they move past it. And then the next person they see, they say, well, how you doing? Oh, oh, yesterday, this thing happened. And they come back to the same mood. Well, wait a minute. You just moved past it. Why are you, you going to tell this person that you're seeing today what happened yesterday? Why don't you tell them what's happening now? Nothing. <laughs> anyway, it's a habit that the mind gets caught up in. We want to begin again, 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 again. We went, this is, I'm a fresh starting point for reality. Do not hold your place in negativity. People do that. You know, I've taught over the past that, that you know, uh, people will be, will be going through something. They come into a service. They get inspired. They get uplifted. And then they start to think, hmm. When I came in here, I was worried about something. What was it? I don't remember. I was mad about something. I was worried about Oh, there it is. You know, and they bring it back. No, no, no. We're teaching you how to hold your place in God how to hold your place in your latest insight, how to hold your place in your latest revelation. So when you have an insight, you have a revelation, you have a, a, a movement where you say, oh, the presence of God is here. Oh, wisdom, guidance is speaking to me. Why don't you hold your place there? So that when stuff starts to happen, you say, what was that insight? What was that insight? Oh, yes, God is closer to me than my breathing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, all my needs are met. I remember that feeling. All my, hold your place in the absolute truth, you see. 
Let that be where you live. It's practice. It's easy. It's simple. But it, it takes a level of practice. And I say it's easy because it is easy to slip into it, but it's easy to slip out of it too, you see. And so listen. Begin. Let's begin. It, I, I know it's, it's new beginnings again. Now what happens when you have new beginnings again and again and again and again? You start to purify your awareness and you become like a child again. You know how children, before they're jaded by adulthood, you know, meet life with a, with a, with a great degree of, of imagination and newness, you know? It's just like, and they see things for the first time, sometimes all the time, until, you know, there's a certain level of experience and imprint that happens on their mind as the statement goes, you know, a child may come into the world like a clean slate and then people start to white on it, you know what I mean? They write their own fears on it, they write their own doubts, they write their own unresolved issues until the kid begins to see not through the clean slate that they were, but they begin to see through the patterns that people have written on. But a real child, when you begin again, you become childlike again. And you live in the field of possibilities. What good can happen? I was on a program yesterday, and uh, they, they were asking me a question about, you know, areas that I had grown over the years. And, and I was explaining that I live in this place now where I always feel, most of the time, I feel that something good's about to happen. Now, I don't know what it is. I have no inkling of what the good is, but it's just a feeling that I have. It's like something good's about to happen. So my mind is always on a hunt for the evidence of something good that's about to happen. It's the opposite of paranoia. You see? It's like, oh, something good. What, oh, what's, ooh, God's about to, you know, life is about, uh, what's, what's, what's going to happen? You know? It's, and, and we want to live in that dynamic. So that which we are looking for when we have come into beginning again, we're actually looking with that frequency. So what we're looking for is absolutely a seed embryonic state within us that we're beginning to look for. And then that becomes our dynamic. It becomes how we see and what we see. You remember the old story about the, 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 the guys that went to this place and no one had any shoes, and one guy was like, this is terrible, nobody has his shoes. But the other guy was a shoe salesman. He said, all I see is feet that I can sell shoes to. You know what I mean? He saw, he saw it differently. Ooh, he didn't see negativity. I didn't tell it right, but you got the story. Now, it's me being silly. Okay. So... Let's run through this right quick, because, and you pick out your own nuggets that you need to practice with and your own insights that you need coming back to, you know. Soulful success and real manifestation and real success has something to do with the unfoldment of your soul. You can gain the world, but you can atrophy the soul if you use the law of manifestation just to get now, in the beginning stages, it's a good thing because you've got to learn that there is a law. It's not capricious. It's not superstitious. It really works. But you want to attach it to the unfoldment of your soul. You want to be closer to the presence. You want to become more yourself. You want to activate the love and the compassion, the beauty, the kindness, the, the, the activity of your, 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 your soul's um, gifts and talents and capacities, you see. And you want to break free from the lie that you may be telling yourself that your good is stealing from somebody else, you see. That your good creates waves and wakes of possibility, uh, a waves a living field of potential con that becomes contagious in wakes of, of inspiration and encouragement. And then you step into the awareness that when good is happening everywhere, anywhere, oh my God, you celebrate it so that you're not blocking it from happening through you. And when negative energy is coming at your direction, you know, bless them. Pray for them. And you'll be give thanks to them later because they made you strong in the vibration and in the frequency that allows you to not be touched by the world. This is important. This is important because there is malicious hypnotism that happens 
on the planet when you're living by the confines of the society in which we are living. That malicious hypnotism is corporate media. They will steal your attention and have you block your transformation. And instead of being transformed, the pain and the grief that's within you, they'll have you take a pill instead. So that you'd block your whole feeling about what's going on. That's just an aside, but it's a really good aside. Malicious hypnotism runs rampant in our society. You want to wake up, celebrate the good everywhere, pray for those that are cursing you as you rise up, and then stop. This is a new beginning for my life right now. I'm a nonlinear being. Reality is nonlinear. Linear. It's eternal. It's a quantum field of infinite potential. I'm beginning my life again now. You, you know what you hear underneath there? In the beginning, God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. That cellular logos, that vibration, that frequency. In the beginning. This is our in the beginning right now. I know you, you have an interpretation of your past. I know you've had experience. I know all of that. But you can set yourself free and come into the dynamic of harmonizing good, clearing your filters little by little by little, sometimes dramatically. Now is the appointed time. Now we are the appointed people. In the beginning again, setting ourselves free so you can take the high tide of the beginning of the year in which people are enthusiastically visioning for their life. You can take the high tide of what's being seeded in the awareness of our society, but ride it into a spiritual practice. When you become resolute in it, you see. Now, you guys want to harvest some good in your life? You can't harvest nothing you haven't planted. And so your intention, your vision, your soulful success, your planting that one day you'll harvest, you see. It's that simple. Beginning again. So I said in the earlier service, when you look at the cosmos, multidimensional universe, that's the dance of God. The solar systems, the galaxies, the planets, the heavenly bodies, that's the dance of the spirit. God dancing. And with certain, certain microphones that magnify the sounds, you can hear the songs of the infinite, the music of the spheres. All of this is happening throughout all of nature and all of the cosmos. And we are to participate in that. I'm going to stop talking, but I just have to bring this one point. I think it's very clear, and I'll, I'll, I'll repeat it over and over again until you catch it. We, are, we, we emanate from two levels of creation. One... It is written that you are the image and likeness of God. What does that mean? That means you have a faculty of being able to think independent of circumstances and ultimately have the power of choice. Secondly, or firstly, you have emerged from eternity. You weren't created, really. You emerged from the eternal. That part that's created the image and likeness of God is unique to our species. A tree has a built-in intentionality of yes. Put it in the right soil, sunlight, right nutrition. The tree reveals the majesty and the glory of God. It doesn't have a no in it. There's no no there. No, 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 which means you have that same faculty. So with the truth that you've emerged from, from the holy, infinite presence, and you have the faculty of the image and likeness of God, you've got to participate in your own unfolding. 
You've been given everything, but now you got to use it. Are you going to get caught up in the, in the conspiracy of mediocrity? Or are you going to rise, enter into a level of soulful success? Regardless of circumstance, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop. I got to stop, but this is so important. When you go into your prayer, stop bringing the conditions in there with you. You can't heal at that level. You can't reveal. No, no. The conditions may have drove you to prayer, but when you go into prayer, you let go of the conditions and you begin again. In the beginning, God, I'm free now. Life is moving through me now. Everything is working together for my good. My body is whole and perfect and magnificent. All my needs are met. The, the law doesn't want to hear anything about your condition. The law doesn't want to hear about your interpretation of the condition. The law doesn't want to hear about what they're saying, what the label is about your condition and the prognosis about your condition. The law only wants to hear, I am whole. I'm an emanation of wholeness. I'm an emanation of light and love and intelligence. You see, stay with it. And then celebrate your way home. Let's watch this being celebrated. Let's watch this being celebrated. This is Andrea Warner. Andrea Warner. <laughs> she looks like Jennifer O'Neill. That's Jennifer O'Neill's sister. <laughs> they must have had this, must have been roommates at different times. Is that how you dance, Jennifer? Same way? <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, Andrea. <laughs> Andrea, we ha we're holding your sister captive. I hear Brenda Lee singing. Okay. Uh, Andre, you did well. Your sister's proud of you. <laughs> now, now, what about you out there? You know what the answer is, right? The answer is you. Everything that I have said is leading back to the point that you are the answer of your own freedom, your own abundance and prosperity, your own joy, your own healing. You're it. Nobody else has the key. Except for you. You have your own key to your own self-made prison. Turn it. Let's rock it. You want to be whole. You want to be whole. You want a healing. You want a healing. You want to live life Now we dance to the Lord. 
That celebration continue with the fire of your prayer. Oh, feel it. The fire of your prayer. Oh, I feel it. Feel this. Close the outer eye for a moment and get a real sense that you are absolutely standing at the very center of the multi-dimensional universe. The center is everywhere. Circumference is nowhere in all of the power, all of the presence, all of the love. The abundance, the overflow of good is right here and right now. Oh, if you believe it, you'll see it. If you feel it, you'll heal everything. Come with me into the land of gratitude, the altitude of gratefulness, and begin to see with eyes wide closed, outer eye that is, inner eye wide open, all luminosity, brilliance, beauty, Abundance, joy, peace, harmony, elegance, bliss, ecstasy. All this and more cascading out of the no thingness to become the very somethingness of our life experience. Oh, yes. It is from this awareness that I sense into my oneness with God. And we can say that. We're not afraid to say we're one with God. We do not limit or hinder God by saying we're one with God. Mother Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord. We magnify without life the presence that's never an absence. Oh, come with me into the land of gratitude. Enter into the gates with praise and thanksgiving. And feel right.
right here, right now, that everything is working together for your good because it is. I speak the word for each of us that we may taste freedom today, spiritual liberation, that we may escape from the narrow confines of superstition, the narrow confines of, of beliefs and lack and limitation and otherness, the narrow confines of any sense of bigotry or, or racism or, or sexism or homophobia or other phobia. We break free from the confines of a spiritual astigmatism where we can't see what's real anymore because we're blinded by opinion. Please believe me, your opinion can't heal anything. It is the truth that heals, the activity of the truth in our consciousness that heals. So we open ourselves up, we make our available to the truth that makes us free, the presence of God expressing through us in a language and in a way that we can understand right now. We open ourselves up with great availability, which is the greatest ability is availability. I'm available, I'm open, I'm receptive, I yield, I surrender to all that is the great God of the universe. Feel it in your bones. Oh, Jackie Simone and Big Bad Ben Dowling, they're going to help us feel this for a moment. I want you to just keep your eyes closed and just feel into this. Feel into it. To dream the impossible dream To fight the unbeatable foe
the world will be better for this. When you go for what your surface mind may have said is unreachable in your life, may have settled for mediocrity, the world is better because of the waves and wakes that you emanate and leave behind, building the beloved community vibrationally, breath by breath, moment by moment, be new beginnings again.